own citizens of some country. And since digital technologies are now all around us, we're becoming to be also part of a new kind of world, which is a digital world. So we're digital citizens in a world that is much the same and at the same time very different from the world we're used to. So if we talk about citizenship, we could go back to the, to the Asian Greeks, but I think basically it's about participation in society. So it's about social, political, cultural, civic participation. Um, and because society is getting increasingly digital, um, it poses some questions, some challenges on, on how we deal with this. So if we talk about citizenship, citizenship education, we look at how schools and teachers can get involved in empowering children and young people to actively participate in a digital society. Education is a kind of onboarding, if you want to use it in startup terms, into our society. So our young people, as very small children, enter education systems and come out 20 years later as what we call adults, citizens of our world. Now, if we don't equip in this age, in these 20 years, these citizens with digital competences that enable them to deal with the new world that they are living in, and the competence that enable them to learn more, to develop further, because through their lifetime things will change. So if we don't equip them during this time in school, in higher education or in vocational education, then when do we do it? So education is crucial to getting young people ready for this world. So digital technology is everywhere. I think a lot of children and young people are quite savvy um, media users. But the question is, do they really have the, the critical thinking skills, the critical autonomy to, to take a distance of the digital technology they, they experience in their daily media experiences? So I think education is, is key in providing these kind of uh, critical thinking skills. Um, and I think it will help um, young people, children, to be more critical, to take a distance and to critically reflect and actively participate in a digital media society. Our education systems are very good. They are the best in the world. At the same time, the world is changing, so we need to make sure that education adapts. That means we need to always make sure that what we're teaching in education systems, and just to be clear, we're talking about schools, higher education, that, and everything else that's there, we need to make sure that what is taught is relevant to the lives of the people that are in the education system. So if we're teaching today things that were relevant 50 years ago, but are not any more relevant for the world that the young people that we're teaching will be living in, then we're doing something wrong. So we need to make sure that digital competence are on the agenda and that digital technologies are also used in education because you can't just teach something and not actually use it. I mean, you can't teach maths without using it. And it's the same about technology. If you don't use technology throughout your day, you will never be truly competent in using it. So it's a matter of making sure that technology is both taught and used in the education systems. And that's for the benefit, of course, not for everything, but for where it's useful and beneficial. So I think there is a, a national aspect to that. So I think at the national level, we need good educational policies. We need good curricula. We need good resources. We need good professional training. Um, but I think there's also a, a European element. And I think that's also the reason why, why we're here today. So it's about exchanging um, expertise, experience, good practices. And I do believe that by trying to, to learn from each other that we can improve uh, education across and, and beyond Europe.